we are going to address the question of the trumpets are followed by the vials and the vials are followed by the plagues. And then listen attentively for about an hour when we identify that these plagues are pouring out right now. Now for your study at your own leisure, you have to study Revelation 8, all of it, and study Revelation 16, all of it. Give me Psalm 71, 18, and then you will enjoy the comfort of your seats hereafter. Now, I'm old, so they say. I don't feel old. I need not say any further. But now there is a movement that says... We forsake the old pastors for the new. And the other day I was watching the news. Yes, I was watching the news. And there is a young man from KwaZulu Natal saying they must kick out all the old God. It's time for the youth to take over the government. I said, oh, it's actually a political spirit. Now it's sliding into message churches. Let us hear what God says about old pastors. I'm standing on the word. Now also, when I am old and gray-headed, oh God, forsake me not. Why? Read with me. Until I have showed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is too. So you can't do away with me. As long as I'm still alive, God has to honor his word. Amen. Brother Chuma, if you are here, thank you for the little quip you sent me. An old dog does not bark like a young dog. A young dog barks for anything, keeps you awake all night. But an old dog, he already knows who the thieves are. He won't keep you awake. He'll bark at the right time. Let's give God the glory. Praise the Lord. You may enjoy the comfort of your seat. Now we begin with a summary of the trumpets. What I'm going to share with you comes from many, many, many years of listening, reading, praying, waiting, saying, Lord, only a few ministers in the message attempt these trumpets and vials in place. Help me also, for the sake of my church at the Willows, Pretoria East, South Africa. Now give us a summary of how these angels sound. Watch. <coughs> Revelation 8, 7, read with me. The first angel sounded. Now you'll read what follows. Watch. Second angel and the fourth angel sounded. So they sound one, two, three, four. Watch now. And the fifth angel. And watch. And the sixth angel. And watch. And the seventh angel sounded. So these angels are individual. You read it. The first one sounds. This one, this thing happens. The second one follows. That thing happens. So they are individual. Do we agree? Amen. You read it. Amen. But watch. Now we are going to parallel two scriptures for you. And here I beg you to put on your anointing jacket and your spiritual thinking cap. Because I missed this for many years. I read over it. Did I show you that those angels are individual? Did I? Now watch this scripture. John is about to be shown this second queen I showed you a while ago. The mother and child or the mother and son system. Not natural. Now we're moving to Revelation. And that, read with me, I'm going to fall if you don't pray for me because how did I miss this? 
And there came one of the seven angels. But watch it. Which had the seven vials. Now what happened? Did I not read that they all had individually? Because when you read vial, you're reading trumpet. It's one and the same thing. When you say first trumpet, you're saying first vial. Vial is just a holder. Hello? So why is it that suddenly one of the seven angels, we don't know is it the first or the last, but we will answer that. He suddenly has all seven. I'm pausing. You are looking at it. I had missed, I knew they are one of the seven angels, but I had missed that this one of the seven, somewhere in time, he ends up having all seven. Which seven were individual when the first one sounded, the second one sounded? Are you with me? When this one comes, he has now all seven vials. And he talked with me saying, come here. I will show you. This angel is going to reveal mysteries. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters. Who is this angel? Where in time does he appear? And suddenly, when he does appear, he has collected all those other vials. They are now in his hand. Watch now. Revelation 21. After he shows John the false bride in Revelation 17, the mother of them all, the same angel has to reveal to John the true bride. Oh, mama. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials. Does it read the same? Yes. Full of the seven last plagues. Can you see in Revelation 17 it said, had the seven vials, but it said nothing of the plagues. But in Revelation 21 it says, vials full of the seven last plagues. God has added a little notch. And he talked with me saying, come here, I will show you who? I'll show you the queen. The real queen. So John on the Isle of Patmos saw everything and possibly saw you sitting in this church this morning. I have a quote for it. The prophet says, as he opens the scripture in 1965, he says, I'm going to preach on the future home. John saw a new city coming and described it. He says, I'm going to preach on that. And he says, John saw into my sermon this morning. I think you missed it. A man is standing in America and he's saying, John 2,000 years ago saw my sermon this morning. You know why? Because when John saw the vision back there, looking to here, John saw a man reveal things and John back there bowed before the vision seeing this man. And this man, I'm in Revelation 21. This man said to John, via the power of vision, he says, don't worship me. Worship God. I'm only revealing these things. That is deep. That is not chicken feed. I'm quoting the prophet now. That's eagle food. How they could communicate one is 2,000 years back there in a corporal body on the Isle of Patmos. Another one is in his own body here in 1965, but by the power of vision. Yes. Folks, I'm now going to attempt to show you who this angel is who at the end suddenly has all seven. Whereas when it began, 
Each angel sounded separately when it began 2,000 years ago. We are going. I have managed to show you from the two scriptures that, oh, the Revelation 17 speaks only of vials, but the same wording is repeated in Revelation 21, and it shows you the vials are full of the plagues because it's one and the same thing. One is a container. It's called a vial. The contents are called plagues. Before we get there, why is the world today, as I'm standing here, you are sitting there, why is the world going through so much trouble like it never did before? Yes, we have arrived. Give me Revelation 4 verse 1. We are taking it in time. We'll be out here before your tummy grumbles for lunch. I want to prove to you that a trumpet, normally when you read, you think, beep, 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 beep. Now, in God's terms, a trumpet is when God speaks. Amen. Here it is. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was the first what? Come on, church, you're not sleeping, are you? The first what? Voice. The emphasis is on the voice. The first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet doing what? Now, we have Brother Owen here who blows a trumpet. Does that trumpet ever speak to you, Brother Owen? No. So over here, trumpet is more than do 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 because it talked to John. So trumpet is Christ. It is Christ talking through the seven angels. And then at the end, Christ is going to talk through one of those seven. You'll get to know in a while. Give us a quote how God did it from the beginning. He says, God says, that's a previous statement. I'm only summarizing. You go back and listen to the tapes. Press play. He's showing you how God calls a messenger like, there were seven up to our day, Paul, Irenaeus, Martin, I hope I'm related to him, I don't know, <laughs> Columba, Luther, Wesley. Now you must find out who the last one is, the one that will have all the vials. There are seven of them. Revelation 1, Jesus has them in his right hand. They are the other messengers to the churches. So he's telling you, when the first one comes, the second one comes, now he says, and then God takes his message. It means when he's finished with that man, the man goes to sleep in death. The church age moves on to another. God raises another messenger. And God takes his messenger with the elect of that age. So he's including all seven. Are we here? And he lays them away. He takes them to dimension six asleep. And then he, God, drops a what? A plague upon them who rejected it. A temporary? So when Paul was rejected, those who received Paul were sealed away and they went to dimension six somewhere. So it was with Paul, Irenaeus, Martin, that, that, that. But God releases a temporary judgment for that age. Now you got your answer. So this messenger who comes at the end and he is all seven. It means he picks up all those temporary judgments of the ages and he pours them out in the last. I think we can close church right there. I'll summarize it for you. But I need to give you proof. Are you willing to sit for a little while? God bless you. Next, my brother, if there is. So, every age, when you reject the messenger, there's punishment. I think I said it very plain. So, how can the messenger of this age, church age be rejected and there are no consequences? Amen. There you go. If he has punished every church age before for rejecting his spokesman, you are no different. He's going to have to do it. Then he brings it to 1933, 
1945, when Hitler began to kill the Jews en masse in great numbers throughout all of Europe. You know what the prophet says? He says, it was the sounding of the sixth trumpet already. 1933 to 1945, when Hitler disappeared mysteriously. Some documentaries say he committed suicide. But in the vision the prophet saw, he said, the man would disappear mysteriously. That's why there are rumors that he fled to South America and that, that, that. The rumors are still there. So can you believe it? That already in the 30s and early 40s, it was the sixth trumpet calling the Jews from Europe to push them back to this little piece of land that we are going to visit in October, eight of us from this church, so that God can fulfill other prophecies that he will restore Israel to nationhood. It was already the sixth trumpet. And I'm going to drop a bomb. And there was already a man on the earth. Could he be the seventh one? Because somebody, God bless you, Brother Elfie, somebody had to pick up that the mystery was running already and reveal it to John. John in the vision represents the bride. Ah, to me, it's becoming very plain. No wonder this one who then tells us the sixth trumpet is driving the Jews back to the promised land. Who's he to be telling us? He's the seventh and last. Next quotation. I'll prove what I've just said. Here's a quotation where it says, tying it together in the hour that we're living. Last seven bars. We're waiting for the machine. Now, if you ever miss this quote, I have failed this morning. Watch what he says. Now, in doing this, doing what? He says, I want to teach on the trumpets and the plagues and the vials. In doing this, he says in 65, I have come here for the purpose of teaching. No other messenger spoke like this. Show me Paul in his writing saying, I want to speak on the vials. It wasn't time. Amen. Go into history. Irenaeus, Martin, Columba, Wesley, Martin Luther, none of them touched on the vials. So who's this man in 1965 who says, ah, the purpose of my coming here is teaching the last vials, the last seven vials, and the last seven trumpets, and the last seven thunders of the book of Revelation. Read with me. I want the church to read this. Not tying them back there. Did you hear him? He says, these trumpets, these vials, these thunders, we are tying them together, not individually now. We are tying them together in this hour we are living to follow the opening of the seven seals and the seven churches. Give God the glory. Without fear of contradiction, without much equivocation, big words, eh? <laughs> we learn these things from the people. I therefore declare to you that that angel that is spoken of in Revelation 17 and Revelation 21 that ends up having all seven, he just told you now, that I have them, all seven, and I now want to teach you. Give God the praise. <laughs> Give us the one way. He again confirms that these last day plagues happen together, but he's going to use the word cluster. How many of you have ever enjoyed a cluster of grapes? 
Ja, is een tros in Afrikaans, right? Met baie drijven om dit. So they are all interconnected, correct? Here's a quote, and I'll be closing in a while. He says, and I'm anxiously waiting. I, personal pronoun, am anxiously waiting for the hour to where we can all congregate. Thank God today we are congregated. In one place. And preach on those seven plagues and seven vials and the trumpets and so forth. Are you ready? Read with me. They all happen right in a... When they started, I read you the scriptures. First angel sounded, it was on its own. Second angel sounded on its own. But in the last days, they all come back as a... I saw you nod, it means you caught it. Ah, now we are just about going. Now, let us quickly glean, and then I'll be done, to show you certain events that are happening around the world. Give us, my brother, the parallels, Revelation 8, 7. Read with me very slowly. What we have done for you this morning, we have bridged Revelation 8 and Revelation 16. You know why God hid it like that? When you read Revelation 8, it's confusing. Then you go to 9 to 10 to 11 to 12 to 10. You've lost what you read in 8. By the time you come to 16, you don't know what's happening. The Holy Spirit says, now just compare 8 and 16. Show them that the trumpet, the violin, and the plague are saying the same thing though God separated them in the writing of the Bible. Watch Revelation. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of, not all the trees of the earth, the third part of trees was burnt up. Are there fires today that are igniting mysteriously? Come on now! Just in the week, another fire ignited in California. And while they are trying to extinguish that Portugal, Spain, fires, they are not man-made. It's a plague. And trees are burning. Green grass is burning. Your oxygen is being depleted. And the third part of trees was burnt up and all green grass. Third part. Is it happening? Now watch the same thing now, hidden in Revelation 16 2. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noise and grievous saw upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. Already, we are not yet in the tribulation, but it says, grievous saw. Now there's monkeypox. People are hitting out in all kinds of sores. Before that, it was AIDS. Are you here? <laughs> Suddenly, there are diseases doctors know not about. Can we imagine this is a pre-tribulation? It's not yet a tribulation. And already we see these things. And the bride is still on the earth. Remember my teaching. Moses and Israel were still in Egypt when the plagues hit Egypt. Then Moses had to lead them out from under those plagues to a promised land. Today, the message of another Moses is going to lead you from under these plagues to the rapture. <laughs> My brother, watch the second angel we are comparing. Ah, oh, you can't miss it if you read it like that. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And always it says, 
And the third part of the sea became blood. These are symbols. How many of you know as I'm standing here, you are sitting there, that the oceans are polluted? Fish is dying. Marine life is dying. They're trying to say it's industrial poisoning, whatever it is. It never was like that. The, the, the plagues are pouring out. Watch Revelation 8, 9 continues. And the third part, always watch that third. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. It's now bringing in First and Second World War. Where are those ships that were sunk? They are laying at the bottom of the sea. Polluting the sea. Watch now when you go to the same thing in Revelation 16. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea. Can you see? In Revelation 8, it's the sea. In Revelation 16, the second corresponds to the second trumpet, corresponds to the second vial, the sea. And it became as the blood of a dead man, coagulated blood. And every living soul in the sea died. The sea is dying. Let's go on, brother. Watch now the third one. It's happening. And the third angel sounded. And there fell a great star from heaven. Burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers. And upon the fountains of waters. I want to stop right there. Chernobyl. The waters of the world are polluted. I'm going to drop a bomb. Somewhere, maybe my brother, while I'm talking, you can find wormwood. Just find wormwood. Angel of the waters. The scripture says in Revelation, it was an angel from heaven called wormwood who made the waters bitter. There it is. Thank you, brother. You are a star. And the name of the star. Did it say a star came from heaven? And the name of the star is called? And the third part of the waters became wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Thank you, brother. We'll go back to our sequence. I never knew this until I traveled to Moscow. Moskva. Moscow. I've been to Kiev, the very Kiev. The Donetsk area where the war is. They are message believers. I've preached there. Brother Beckett, honorable brother Beckett. He's also preached in those areas. Little did I know that these chemical plants, like Saporia right now, the whole thing is around Saporia, they are very close to each other in the Ukraine. Ukraine. And I did not know that in that dialect of Russian in Ukraine, are you ready? Wormwood is Chernobyl. You've got to give God the glory, brother. You have to give him the glory because he even had them name it without realizing they are quoting the scripture. So that when you read your Bible, God can help you, maybe not them, help you to click. The waters of Europe are undrinkable, really. You may risk drinking the waters way up north, the north of Norway, Sweden, Finland, a little bit part of Scotland. You can still drink from the rivers. But anything beyond, if you don't believe me, why is bottled water a worldwide trade? I've answered you. The waters are no longer safe to drink. Scripture. The Bible is a living book. Amen. There is no book anywhere like the Bible. Amen. We are going to Revelation 16, 4. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters. There you go. And they became blood. Means undrinkable. Let me stop there. It doesn't mean literally became blood. In the days of Moses, it became blood. To make it undrinkable. So in the book of Revelation, it uses the symbol became blood. Not necessarily blood. It's saying undrinkable. 
And I heard the angel of the waters say, that's Wormwood, thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shalt be theirs, Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, which are, was, and shall be, because thou hast judged us. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And you know who killed the Christians in the Dark Ages, no? It's this Queen Mother here, whose city is, you said it. I'm being videotaped. I'm being careful. So there are three queens, man, don't miss it. The one was a natural queen with a son. The other one is another queen with a mother and son. Now you are the third queen with the son of God. Can you see those trees? Let's move on, brother. We are doing very well. My time is just right. And the fourth angel sounded. And the third part. Every time it's third part. Why? Why? Why every time? Because it's pre-tribulation. When the rapture happens, the bride goes, the rest of the other parts will fall upon the earth. If the earth the world is groaning with just a third of the judgment. What's it going to be when the rest of it comes in the tribulation? That's why I kept saying to you, watch, it says third, third. It's pre-judgment, and we are still here. Let's read again. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise. I mean, industrial pollution now. Do you know the sun rays and the moon rays no longer come through as pure as before? We are dying. You no longer get the vitamin D that we used to get from the sun the proper way. It's that plus. Why do you think Pharmaceuticals are making millions out of health tablets. Something's gone wrong up there. Scripture. We read, And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now this angel interrupts to say, Three world wars will hit the earth. We've had two already. And you can see they are building up to the third one. Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices, plural, of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. So it started way back there. And John says, there's three more to sound before you are raptured. Revelation 16, 8, and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. It says the same thing. When the Lord Jesus showed me, wait a minute. What is written under the trumpets is actually repeated under the vials. It's the same thing. It's the way he wrote it so that you don't compare. Today we compare it for you through modern machinery. Give God the praise and thank our <laughs> technicians. Of course, if you mind a personal note, the idea comes from me. I tell them, do it like this too, to make it easy for you. Can you see why the prophet says, I lay it in the tapes. I'm not saying this for me. We have to back up the tapes. He says, and men will come and make sense. I want to say this morning, I hope, I hope I'm among those men. I don't know. I hope. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun and Power was given unto him to scorch men with. It's all these fires you see that are just not man-made. Let's move on, brother. We are about to close. We are now going to the fifth, and then we have the sixth and the seventh. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star, singular, fall from heaven unto earth, and to him, singular, was given the key of the bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. Now, when we were teaching on the dimensions, 
We forgot to remind you that every dimension is bottomless. Can I prove it to you? We live in dimension three. Have you seen when uh, Richard Branson and them, all your billionaires, when they shot their spaceships into space, they said there's no end to it. And yet it's only dimension three. That's why they're saying the Milky Way has no end. Every dimension has no end. It is amazing. God the creator made it like that. So now here's your answer. So in dimension six, it's not only those lines you see there. Because Adam is there. Isaiah is there somewhere. Jeremiah. Paul. Irene is there. The last day says they are there. The ones crying under the altar. They cannot be in any other dimension but six. But they are not with the believers. Because the, the dimension is bottomless. The foolish virgins. We showed you last Sunday if you were here. God cannot lose them so they don't go to hell. Just like the Jews who were killed by Hitler. They didn't believe in Christ, but they didn't go to hell. He gave them robes. He gave them robes and put them under an altar. So if he can give Jews who did not believe in Christ robes, and here on this side are foolish virgins who are just as good as you are, but they are blinded. He can't lose them either. So he gave them a place. We showed you the place last week under the brazen labor. Give God the praise. But they are not all together with the believers. They will stay there. I'm saying they, the Jews, under the altar of sacrifice, foolish virgins under the brazen labor, and the rest, they will stay there and miss the wedding supper. They will stay there as, and miss a thousand years. It's where you go that determines whether you'll be at the wedding supper. That's why the believer is brought under the altar of incense. The closest to God. They are the ones that will resurrect now. The ones under the altar of incense. And they are the ones that will be at the wedding supper. They are the ones that live on earth with Christ a thousand years. They are the ones in the new world. They live in the city. All the others in the different parts of the dimensions, they will be the people outside the city. Say amen, somebody. My brother, let's move on with the fifth angel. We do the sixth and the seventh and we are done. And he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit. Have you noticed the latest movies and music videos? Even your rugby players, stadia, smoke. And people think, oh, it's a modern invention. They scored a goal. Now smoke is billowing at the rugby match, soccer match. Video, movie. It's the hour we live in. No one even smoking is on the increase. The bottom, bottomless pit is open. The smokes of hell are wifting about. And it says, as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened, you know, now they call it what? They have a word. Ozone depletion. They've got fantastic words, how the rays of the sun aren't coming through anymore. It's all this darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit, folks. Hell is on earth, so must heaven be here also. I'm not talking heaven as where you go to, but the atmosphere of hell is here, and so is the atmosphere of heaven. You are sitting right now under the atmosphere of heaven. Next, my brother. Let's go to the next angel. Can you see they are saying the same things? And the fifth angel poured out his vial. Watch this. Upon the seat of the beast. The beast is Rome. Watch where he pours out that vial. Upon the seat of the beast. And his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain. The hour is coming. We are there now. 
and blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. Already we see monkeypox, etc. And watch, so hard are the people and repented not of their deeds. Have you noticed? An earthquake shook an island this morning. Seven point something. Do you hear those islanders calling God for mercy? No. Specialists come and then they talk you away on TV. Every time a disaster hits, Satan has his ministers on TV, they talk it away. They don't repent. Let's move on, my brother. And the sixth angel sounded. This is now the one who gathered the Jews from all over Europe and all around the world to take them back to Israel. Now I want to drop a bomb. So why are there still Jews in Johannesburg, Cape Town, Pretoria, London, New York, when the rest of the Jews went back and started a nation in 1948? Why are there still Jews sticking around? You have to read your Bible. In Revelation 7, there are two tribes that are not called. Dan and Ephraim are not called now in Revelation 7. So these Jews who are not going to Israel, they have no calling in their hearts to go back because they are the descendants of Dan and Ephraim. They, they will linger around until God is finished in his plan and then we will meet them in the new city. But they will live outside. I warn you, be kind to any Jew wherever you meet them. Because if you don't balance it, You'll end up saying, I only pray for the Jews in Israel. These ones in Johannesburg, Cape Town, I hate them. No. They are Dan and Ephraim. They are still part. Because when you read Ezekiel 48, deep teachings, there's Dan and Ephraim recalled. God will not lose them. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar. That's now where the believers are waiting. Brother Heman, Sister Mabunda, Sister Vera Sami, all the sisters and the brothers, they are under that golden altar, which is where? Before God. Let's move on, my brother. Saying to the sixth angel, this is going to be deep before we go. Saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which abound in the great river Euphrates. Give me three minutes. This is the sixth angel, right? The time of Hitler and the Holocaust. Then it speaks of four angels. Who are these? Hitler. Mussolini, hmm? Stalin, Eichmann. Do you know these men? You saw them in politics. They were prophesied of. Why does it say these four men were bound up in the river Euphrates? The, Euva, the river Euphrates, naturally speaking, is part of Babylon, Iraq. There we go again. Physical river, like we started with, physical queen. Then God used the symbolism to take it from a literal river when there was a mystery Babylon. Is there a mystery Babylon in the Bible? Then it must have a mystery river. And therefore God calls it Euphrates. These four men, do your history, I can't do everything for you in one hour. They were all raised Catholic. I actually have seen a picture, you can Google it. Hitler at primary school, I think with Stalin, same class. You see, my brothers, 
God knows all things. So when he reveals and says, four angels which come from the river Euphrates, not Iraq, another Babylon, mystery Babylon. They were Jesuits, trained, Illuminati. Let's move on, brother. Too much will get me into trouble. I've said enough. Now, and the four angels were loose, who are Mussolini, Stalin, Hitler, Eichmann, which were prepared for an hour. Over here does not mean one hour. Prepared for that time and a day and a month and a year. Can you see hour is not on the clock because it says day, month, and year. To slay what? Do you know that the Holocaust in Europe, including the Polish people and the Romanians, Hitler and his men killed a third part of mankind. History says it, but the Bible already said it. Because remember, John wrote way back then. So now when they say, oh, the Holocaust, Hitler and his men killed a third part, the Bible already told us. To kill a third part of men, can we safely say this scripture is past tense? Where will the other part of men be killed? World War is coming. Third part is killed already under Second World War. John says, I saw another war, another war coming. And we are here. You know what kills me before I close? You have people come to the willows, they hear these great deep things, they blink their eyes. Tomorrow they are back to themselves. Nothing's changed. I'm telling you what I see. No desperation, no nothing. Then weekend, they come back again. Lord, where are we failing? Let's go now. Next, my brother, we are about to close. I'm amazed that in one hour we've managed to summarize. Can you see the sixth angel poured out? We're in Revelation 16. It spoke there of the river. It repeats it again. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Now this is deep. Some teachers make this physical. They are saying the river Euphrates in Iraq, through mechanical means, is going to dry up. And then the kings of the east, these are your Muslim countries. Have you noticed all of them? Yes. They end up with a stun or a jan. All of them. Kyrgyzstan, Afghanistan, Pakistan. We are not mocking. They are the kings, your kings from the east. Because, oh, this is deep. I hope I offend nobody. When Cain left Eden, where, which direction did he go? Mm. You see how Genesis way back connects you to the end. Yeah. They will come against not only Christianity. That's why they are, they are growing in numbers. But they will come against Israel as well. So some people naturalize the scripture. I don't know, I haven't heard what the prophet says, whether it'll be the river drying up, or is it spiritual? Because Christians are drying up in their souls. They sit in churches, they dry up. Others, Brother Vic, you're a minister. Mutukwani, are you here? Brother Elf, note this. Others sit in churches and some rain falls on them. Yeah, there are services, even in message churches. And then the river. But when you come to Christ, he says, I give you waters from within you that will never dry up. Let's move on. We're about to close. And I saw, now this is, under that sixth trumpet, something happens. Now, 
between 1933 to 1945. A spirit that had been laying there hidden since the mother and child religion began surfaces between 1935, 1933 to 1948 when Israel becomes a nation. And I saw three, the prophet says, the resurfacing of your Trinity doctrine. Did you know that Hitler's emblem, the swastika, he didn't design it. I've traveled through India. In India, the swastika is not for murder. No, it's on every temple. I've traveled through India. It's a symbol of positivity, peace, but he hijacked it. Now watch now, same thing here. The office of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is one God, is going to be hijacked. And now they're saying, three persons. That's idolatry. We don't worship three gods in this church. But it's always the enemy does it. Just takes the truth, deforms it. Kinks it. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. A frog is the only animal that will hop, hop, and you wonder why it hops into the wall and it doesn't stop hopping into the wall. I was little and I was saying, what's wrong with this thing? Only to come and hear through this message that frogs are the only creatures whose eyes look backward. So he doesn't see it's a wall. He keeps, he looks backwards. So this Trinity doctrine coming up now looks back to Nicaea, Rome. Yo, yo, yo. I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, the devil himself, and out of the mouth of the beast, his super church, and out of the mouth of false prophet. Because if there is a true, the devil will have a false. I don't have to name the current false prophet. You all know him. We are closing with the last and seventh and I can't believe we've done it in one hour. And the seventh angel sounded. Remember, it's the same one who now gathers all the other trumpets. We read you the scripture. He now, it's his time to sound at the end. And there were great voices in heaven. You know who? All the sisters that you remember in this church and other message churches, the brothers, they are now responding, saying, we've been waiting in this theophany so long, it's now time to take our glorified bodies. The film Avatar. Avatar is an Indian word meaning another body beyond this one. So you have people who are not Christians who already know that there are bodies beyond these ones. And you are still sitting here blinking your eyes. <laughs> and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying, watch, they are announcing the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord. Brother Heman and them, Sister Mabunda, you name them. They are waiting to announce, it's finished. I'm not going to call your country's name. I'm not a politician. But they are announcing, finished with, finished with, finished with. Tired. Politicians. Finished. Saying the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever. Now he's taking over. Man has failed. When is it happening? Seventh trumpet. What is the seventh trumpet? Body change for us. The prophet says, when we leave this earth, amen, everything falls apart. Let's go to the next scripture we close, just about close. And the seventh angel, we are in 16, we read eight. Now we come to 16. Remember, under Revelation 8, the kingdoms are taken over. Now we come to Revelation 16 and the seventh angel we know who he is today, poured out his singular, his male. It's a man. 
Eh, eh, eh. The seventh angel is a man. He said, here's, there it is. He poured out his vial into the air. Let me just refresh you. He stood out there. He picked up a rock. He threw it into the air. Huh? Symbolism. The earth shook. It thundered three times. And God's voice said, judgment strikes west coast. Can you see that angel? Los Angeles, Los Angeles will sink one of these days. It's already done. And there came a great voice out of the temple way of heaven. From the throne saying, Oh, Brother Elfie, you caught it. So the saints who are waiting are saying it is done in their own way. And God echoes and says, yeah, it is done. Did you see how you compare them? They are one and the same. So as I close, you have already noticed that these vials that follow the trumpets and the plagues, they hit the heavens, they hit the earth, meaning trees, grass, water, mankind. It's plagues. Now my last scripture, 1 Corinthians. It is in this hour that this is going to happen. Musicians, please take your positions. Paul saw this day. He says there's coming a time when in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, you know what science says? These computer boffins, they say nothing that they have today in your computer world moves as fast as the twinkle of an eye. And here's a man who wrote 2,000 years ago. He says the rapture is going to be so fast. And the Pentecostals preach that you are going to park your car on the side of a highway. You're going to lock it. You're going to say to a passerby, you want a car? Yes, here are my keys. Why? I'm going into the rapture. You have not read your Bible. The Bible says twinkling of an eye. In the twinkling of an eye, at the, that's the seventh one. Ah, 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 ah. It's the very seventh one you were reading about. There can't be eight of them. The seventh is the last. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we who are still alive, I hope to live to that time, shall be? Let's stand to our feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Church of the Willows. You are not applauding me. You are applauding him who wrote the word. You are applauding him who died for you on the cross and rose. You are applauding him that is soon to return and take us home.